Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to Kalima Tayyibah series. In our previous lessons, we talked about the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was growing up. And we reached the time when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha when he was 25 years old. Before marrying Sayyidah Khadija, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to work in grazing sheep for the people of Mecca. His work was tedious and he earned little money. However, when Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha asked him to manage her business, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam agreed to help her. He worked hard and sincerely, traveled and expanded her business to the north and sometimes east and west. His new work was more comfortable and rewarding. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha and God blessed the couple with a happy life. They lived in harmony and love and enjoyed a successful business. God added to their joy when he blessed them with four daughters and two boys. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became an example for a happy man in Mecca. He had it all, love and harmony, kids and money, morals and looks, confidence and all happiness. One day, a crack appeared in the wall of the Kaaba. Heavy rains and severe flooding struck the city of Mecca and this caused a crack in the wall of the Kaaba. But when it came to putting the black stone back in its place, everybody disagreed on who should put it back. This was because the black stone was considered a blessed stone as it came from heaven and every leader wanted the honor of carrying the stone, kissing it, and putting it back in its place. The black stone was a big deal and still is to our day. After all, it's a rock from paradise. The arguing between the leaders of Mecca got so bad that they almost raised their swords and were on the edge of starting a fight. The arguing continued until one of the men suggested that the first person to enter the Haram, which is the sacred and protected space around the Kaaba, should choose who would have the honor of placing the black stone. By the wisdom of Allah, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the first to enter the Haram. Now, how did Prophet Muhammad وسلم, respond to this difficult situation he was placed in? How did he resolve this conflict between all the tribes? Prophet Muhammad وسلم, thought for a little while. It was a very challenging situation. He couldn't choose his own family over the others. Everyone was fighting to get the honor of placing the black stone. So what did he do? Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had an idea. He took off his cloak, laid it down, and placed the black stone on it. He asked the leader of each tribe to take one corner of the cloak and to lift it and put it in its specified place. And this is what they did. And when they got close enough, the Prophet وسلم, took the black stone with his own hands and put it down in its place. And this is how Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was able to make everybody feel that they had the honor of placing the black stone in its place. The leaders were all satisfied, and so there were no more arguments over the matter. He was 35 years old when this incident happened, and everyone was impressed by the wisdom of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his problem-solving skills. Around that time, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, started experiencing the first signs of prophethood. He used to have true ru'ya, or visions. Anything he dreamt of became true. At that time, there were actually idols made from rocks around the Kaaba. And the people of Mecca used to worship these idols. Of course, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, never worshipped any idol. And he used to dislike what his people did. He hated their way of thinking. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, never imitated anyone in their rituals. How could they worship idols that can benefit nor hurt them? He was sad for the state of his people, the Arabs, and for the state of all humanity. Arabs were corrupt, they believed in myths and delusions, and followed their lusts. They reached the lowest status among nations. They were materialistic and arrogant about their ancestry, wealth, and children. His people were in deep injustice and corruption. He wanted to find a solution to guide his people to the right path, but he was helpless. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, retreated from his people to spend many nights alone, thinking about the universe and the creation of the skies and the earth and the wisdom and the power of the one who created them, Allah, the creator. He used to climb up a mountain called the mountain of light, Jabal al-Nur. It was a very high mountain. Between its rocks and at the very top, there was a very small cave named Hira. It was surrounded by mountains and valleys, and it was located northeast of Mecca, about three miles far from the Holy Kaaba. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to walk for two hours on a bumpy road, then climbed an hour to reach this cave. It was near the top of the mountain, behind two great rocks blocking its entrance. It was extremely hard to cross those two adjacent rocks, and the cave was so small that only one person could fit in. 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spent one month every year in this cave. He spent his days fasting and his nights worshiping God. He used to hike to this cave to glorify God al-Khaliq, the creator, and think about his power. Think about the creation of the mountains, the stars, the skies, and the planets around him. Think about the difference between the day and night, how the cycle between the day and night repeats itself every day, and how these nights and days make up our lives, and how much our lives are really precious, yet many people waste their time without purpose. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, knew that God did not create all this aimlessly, and he was bothered how, how his people were worshipping idols instead of acknowledging the power and creation of God. That's why Prophet Muhammad وسلم, loved being alone in that cave, away from people. Once he would finish his retreat, he would go back to the Kaaba and do tawaf, which means going around the Kaaba seven times, starting with the black stone and ending there. Then he would head back home. On one of the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan and in this very cave, the angel Jibreel السلام, came down to Prophet Muhammad وسلم. In complete darkness and at this frightening height, angel Jibreel السلام, pressed Prophet Muhammad وسلم, forcefully and said, read, iqra. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, replied, I can't read, because in those days, not many people could read. And the Prophet وسلم, had not been taught to read and write. So Jibreel السلام, pressed him once again and said, read. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, repeated his answer, I can't read. After the third time, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, what should I read? Then Jibreel السلام, revealed to him the first verses of the Quran, the words of God. Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord who created. خلق الإنسان من علق. He created man from a clinging substance. اقرأ وربك الأكرم. Read and your Lord is the most generous. الذي علم بالقلم. Who taught by the pen. علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم. Taught man what he did not know. After the first encounter with the angel Jibreel and after hearing the words of God, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, shivered of fear and left the cave of Hira. While he was going down the mountain to return home, and when he reached the middle of the mountain, a voice from the sky stopped him. Muhammad, you are Rasulullah. You are the Prophet of God, and I am Jibreel. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, looked at the sky and saw Jibreel in the form of a man saying, Muhammad, you are Rasulullah, and I am Jibreel. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, stopped and looked at Jibreel. السلام. Wherever he turned his face, he would see the angel Jibreel. السلام. He could see him in every direction he looked at in the sky. He stayed in his place for a while until Jibreel left. And so Prophet Muhammad وسلم, rushed back to his home and returned to his wife Khadija radiallahu anha and told her what just happened to him. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was in total shock and fear. He feared something was wrong with him. Sayyida Khadija assured him and calmed him down. She told him, God won't harm you. You are honest. You value kinship and family ties. You speak the truth. You help the poor. You honor your visitors and you help people overcome their problems and difficulties. So don't worry, you are safe. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, overcame his fears and worries with the help and support of his wife, who became the first person to enter the religion of Islam. Allah guided Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to the religion of Islam that will save his people and all humanity from total loss, bringing them from darkness to light. God blessed this night, the night when the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came down to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi for the first time ever. And this night is known as Laylatul Qadr. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi was 40 years old at the time, and it was during the month of Ramadan in the year 610. It was the time when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi became a prophet. In our next lesson, inshallah, we will talk more about the first word revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Read, Iqra. This is the end of our lesson today, and I'll see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.